Hello and welcome to the first of these weekly scripture teachings. I'm glad that you can join me today. Like with the daily readings that we did uh, over the 100 days of lockdown, we will take a portion of scripture, but we will also spend some time together considering what we have read. Today's reading is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Lord impressed this scripture on me today because at a time of great challenges and confusion in our world, God wants us to know that his will is good, it is acceptable and it is perfect. And one of the best things you can do today during these unprecedented times is to search the will of God. You see, he yearns for you to see things from his perspective. We are to see things from a biblical perspective. But this clarity of thinking doesn't come without one very important condition, which we read about in this passage. And when it comes to matters relating to Israel, by the way, we can also make sense of some of the tensions and opposition that exists today towards the Jewish state. Firstly, a quick word study. The Greek word for transformed in this verse is metamorpho, from which we get the familiar term metamorphosis. When I think of the word metamorphosis, I think of the incredible transformation that a caterpillar experiences when it transforms from its state as a caterpillar to a chrysalis and to a butterfly. This process isn't just a transition from one state to another. What takes place is simply fascinating. You see, when a chrysalis forms, every single cell of that caterpillar is broken down, crushed and dissolved. Not one cell remains. It is recycled into a kind of soup or a smoothie. Nothing of its past as a caterpillar remains. And here's the reason why. You see, the tissue of the caterpillar is not compatible with the life of a butterfly. I'll say that again. The tissue of the caterpillar is not compatible with life as a butterfly. Now, from the dissolved cells of the caterpillar, it develops a new heart, a new brain, new eyes, legs, antennae, a new digestive system, everything. A complete transformation takes place. For the butterfly, everything changes and there is no going back to its life as a caterpillar. When the Apostle Paul wrote to believers in Rome that they were to be transformed by the renewing of their mind, he was simply saying, let your mind reflect the metamorphosis that has taken place by the power of God in your life. You are a new creation. You are no longer the person that you used to be. You are no longer the recognised as the creation that you once were. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. A line has been drawn. You have been transformed and set apart for a new, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But Paul also said, be not conformed. In other words, a transformation has taken place, meaning there is no going back to what you used to be and your old way of thinking. Paul assures us uh, with the promise that a renewed mind leads to knowing the perfect will of God. God wants you to see things from his perspective. The Bible says, let your mind, uh, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, when we turn our mind heavenwards, we, are, we will obtain hope, peace, strength, and clarity of thinking. 
where it's allowing ourselves to be simply swayed by an earthly perspective leaves empty hopes and an uncertain future. And even worse still, aligning our thinking with those that have placed themselves in opposition to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and his will will only lead to confusion and rebellion against him. Instead, in these days in which we are living, we need clarity in our thinking. It comes by making a conscious and deliberate decision to not be conformed to this world's thinking, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. One good example is when it comes to our understanding of God's plan and purpose for Israel. There are some in this world, some in politics, some on TV, and many, many on Twitter and Facebook, who have deliberately set their hearts and minds against Israel. Oh, and by the way, there are some, even in churches in this land, you know, who seem content at ignoring the fact that God has not forsaken his promise to the Jewish people. But there is a small word in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, at the start of the chapter which we've just read, which is the word therefore. Whenever we see the word therefore, it is like a little arrow that is pointing in the direction of what has just come before, in preparation for what is next. It also translates accordingly or con consequently. So we should always ask ourselves, what preceded this verse? Well, Romans chapter 9, 10 and 11 are all about Israel. Chapter 11 tells us that the God has not forsaken his people who he has chosen. It is not often we hear the beginning of Romans 12 at the end of chapter 11, but that is what we're going to do right now as we read some more from this section. So let us read Romans chapter 11, starting from verse 17 and continuing through to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. This is what the word of the Lord says. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against the branches. But if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell, severity, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, who are natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient. And through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has become his counsellor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom 
be glory forever. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In verse 2 of chapter 11, Paul pens that God has not cast away his people, who he foreknew. It reminds us that it is by his grace and grace alone that Gentiles have become partakers of the spiritual inheritance that God promised his covenant people. It explains how Gentiles have been grafted into the, into the wild olive tree, um, uh, warning Gentiles not to boast against the branches because Gentiles have become partakers of the root and not the other way around. It's with this in mind that we show our gratitude and humility towards the Jewish people. Romans 11 also tells us uh, about the day will come when all Israel will be saved. Romans 11 ends speaking about the wisdom and knowledge of God. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counsellor, it says. Those who set themselves against Israel and the Jewish people are actively opposing the mind of the Lord. After all these years, I still sometimes find it hard to understand how the subject of Israel and the Jewish people can trigger such hatred and hostility within the hearts of some, or the blindness by some within the church in our land, or the anti-Semitism that we see so prevalent in our society. And then I remember that actually standing with Israel comes quite naturally when we decide to not be conformed to the thinking of those in the world who are in opposition to the will of God, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, to understand the acceptable and perfect will of God concerning Israel, one must seek the mind of God. It is simple as that. After all, when we realise that the conflict raging in this earth between good and evil, truth and lies, light and darkness, is as much a spiritual battle as it is an earthly one. So when the BBC or other news channels say this, we will question its bias. When the UN singles out Israel and condemns the only Jewish state on earth, we will be restless and convicted to stand with Israel. When people say, yes, but Israel has done this, we will say, but the word of God has said this. So on a personal individual level, let us remember that our lives have been transformed by the power of God. And so let us let, let, let our minds reflect the new creation that we are in Christ. And when it comes to Israel, let us stand firm and not allow ourselves to be overcome by the lies, deception and malice that exist towards the Jewish people. Hold on to that acceptable, good and perfect will of God. May God bless you today and throughout the remainder of this week. And we look forward to you joining us next Monday.